Welcome everybody for today's talk regarding non-repetitive protein dynamics, microsecond to second time scales, monitored by Millinfra Dual Com Spectroscopy. My name is Florian Agman and we will give you a short overview on the recently published results in ACS analytical chemistry. A new domain which is important for kinetic information in the microsecond time regime. The agenda today, I will talk first about the technology and benefits of dual comp spectroscopy, then the validation of quantum cascade laser frequency comes with steps can FDIR on the example of bacterial rhodopsin photocycle and the body of the talk, the protein dynamics, specifically the new time domain, new processes in the microsecond time regime, then about stop flow applications need for speed where the limitations is currently the stop flow device. And to conclude at the end, give some outlook and some general applications on dual com spectroscopy. There are several benefits when talking about quantum cascade laser frequency comps. One is the speed advantage, which will be the body of this talk with the time, high time resolutions in the order of micro milliseconds. One is the brightness, the dual com spectrometer is using strong laser sources which are orders of magnitude stronger than thermal light sources. Another one is complex mixtures can be identified and monitored as we are recording several laser lines. And last but not least, there is also the high resolution version of the iris of one which allows to record one milli wave number resolution or better in a few minutes. Diving a little bit more into the technology, I explained the main principle in a nutshell. Two frequency comp beams are mixed on a beam splitter and detected on a high bandwidth MCD detector. Each pair of optical modes produces a radio frequency beat node. The radio frequency spectrum can then be measured with conventional electronics and represents the optical spectrum. With an open beam measurement, we present here a heterodyne signal, which were obtained with a 1650 laser, which is often used in protein dynamics, overlapping once a high trend water vapor spectrum shows the information of the primary heterodyne signal in the same range. As mentioned before, we focus today on the speed advantage of dual comp spectroscopy, and there are some data of an early publication with Tilman Kotke with a bacterial rhodopsin photocycle, which is repetitive when the te technology has been compared with step scan FDIR. That's only possible with a, with a repetitive measurement. And at that time we were using one of the first lasers at uh, 1200 wave numbers. On this plot, you can see a lot of information. On the y-axis, the spectral resolution is plotted. On the x-axis, the time resolution of one second to one microsecond is depicted. Most commercially available rapid scan FDIR solution with scanning interferometers have this trade-off and overcome the limits in time resolution with lower spectral resolution. For single shot reactions, only rapid scan FDIR is possible. And today's limitation is millisecond time resolution. The fastest scanning interferometer, which I found in the literature, is the one of Joachim Heberlis at the Freie University of Berlin with the 13 or respectively 26 microsecond time resolution. But the signal to noise ratio is not really good and Joachim is one of the first Iris F1 customer using now a dual comp spectrometer where you can measure in the microsecond time regime or as mentioned before, with 1,000 spectra per second continuously. One of the cornerstones of the Iris F1 is the change of a laser module, which can be done in 30 seconds after subsequent stabilization of probably another 10 to 20 minutes, depending on the temperature changes. You're good to go to measure again such high time resolutions with great SNR in microsecond time regime. Before I dive into the results of non-repetitive protein dynamics, I present an overview on the 
compatible accessories with the iris of one. A large sample compartment allows the combination of commercially available stop flow accessories, for example. And then uh, there's also a possibility to combine ATR units, for example, uh, the Golden Gate unit or some gas cells, a transmission unit, or uh, praying mantis from Herrick, and so on. In the supporting information, you will see another additional value of quantum cascade laser frequency comps. I, the IO cuvette, which was used here with the photosensitive paper, was exposed to the quantum cascade laser beam, burned point in the middle of that uh, foil. So the much smaller diameter of the laser beam in comparison with the about six millimeter diameter of the conventionally applied global light in the FDIR offers the advantage of reducing sample consumption by a factor of about 10. So the laser beam for dual com spectroscopy is roughly three millimeter. On this slide, you can see the experimental setup which was used at Protein Dynamics in more detail. The iridation was done with the LPX Pro Eximal laser at the spectrum, and the spectrometer were arranged to make simultaneous measurements with the Bruker FDIR Vertex ADV on the left and the dual com spectrometer from IR sweep Iris F1 on the right. In order to easily access the sample compartment, a window with a small hole was used at the Iris F1. The laser beam enters both spectrometers from the rear side, marked with the blue arrows. We were using a lens before the sample just to enhance the signal, as I mentioned before, with the small diameter. The hydrolysis reaction is slow and can be observed by rapid scan FDIR as a control for our first Ulcom experiment with the protein. In both cases, the global fit of the time-resolved data describes the reaction well. This can be recognized for the dual calm experiment by the good agreement of the time-resolved data at 12-15 wave numbers. The amplitude spectra of photolysis and hydrolysis spectra both agree nicely. You can see that in figure C and D. In the photolysis, a combined asymmetric stretching vibration of the phosphate group is assigned, and in the hydrolysis, a symmetric PO2 stretching mode of the alpha phosphate of GTP is shown. Additionally, to the comparison with step scan, which was done three years ago, we compared the dual calm kinetics first with a second time resolution, which is depicted in figure E. Both techniques, rapid scan FDIR and dual calm spectroscopy, showed a good agreement with the found half time of 29.4 and 28.3 seconds for the hydrolysis reaction. The photolysis difference spectrum of the FDIR experiment can be compared with the same difference from the dual comp spectrometer. In both cases, the spectra are shown in a way that the newly formed absorptions are facing upwards and vanishing absorptions are facing downwards. As figure B shows that spectra and that uh, agrees nicely. Black, the FDIR, and red, the dual comp spectroscopy the results. Same reaction was investigated before in 1999 by an exact extended step scan FDIR experiment in the Gavard group with a 10 microsecond time resolution in a spectral resolution of 15 wave numbers. The data were obtained within five hours of measurement time using 200 times 200 square micrometers segments from five samples of one square centimeters area. This is an ingenious way to do step scan on samples that can only be excited once, but everyone who has done step scan before can imagine that it requires extremely good control of film uniformity and thickness to make this work. The first data point in the FDIR measurements of these larger protein protein complexes is usually above 100 millisecond. With the dual comp setup, our first data point is at 4 microsecond. Kinetics at 1240, 
shown nicely the decay of the alpha GTP band. Clearly, the reaction is almost complete at 100 millisecond, indicating that the reaction could not be observed by rapid scan FDR at all. A half life of 90 milliseconds was obtained. There are even two additional very fast rates resolved preceding the hydrolysis. Seen figure C, half lives of 38 and 86 microseconds were observed. I mentioned in the agenda to give an overview uh, about applications where speed is of importance and current mid IR instrumentation. First measurements were conducted at the IR sweep in 2019 before the lockdown with the manual, manual setup. And on the zoom in, you can get an overview of the first top flow measurements which were done with the RSF1 and an ATR unit. In order not to get influenced by the atmosphere, with changing water vapor, the IR beam in the sample compartment was taped. This way, a single digit second reaction was possible, and we were already able to monitor some early time domain dominated events by syringe movements. It was an ideal time to push R&D, and we were proud today to present first results with sub 10 millisecond stop flow results, which were never possible before. Here you can see the fast transition from beta G to alpha helix of this uh, secondary structure change, which was denaturated by using TFA. This reaction is used here to demonstrate the performance of the biologic SFM4000 with the IRSF1 coupling. Even an intermediate was found, and this was not, couldn't be obtained before with FDIR spectroscopy. The hydrolysis of chloroacetate is a test reaction which is often used by TGK scientific coupling with FDIR, and we increased the concentration to speed up the reaction. It was possible to find a half lifetime of 47 milliseconds and four microsecond time resolution with an excellent SNR. Some additional results which were measured on this setup is so picketing folding. Also with 1650, I made one laser and we got excellent SNR for this reaction with several nice data points in the single digit second time scale. To conclude the general applications, dual comp spectroscopy might be worth to investigate whenever speed or high spectral resolution is of importance. For example, here with the protein dynamics, the shock tube application, stop flow, spectral electrochemistry, or dental curing, we recently measured some really great results on an ATR chips from Erubis with four microsecond time resolution. It might be possible to observe data during 3D printing in situ with this dual com spectroscopy approach. I want to acknowledge also Raphael Horvath and Carson Cutting, who got most of the results during the lockdown in 2020, and definitely Klaus Gerbert, founding director of the Center for Protein Diagnostics in Bochum, Germany, where we produced those microsecond mid IR kinetic results, which were published in ACS, American Chemical Society and analytical chemistry this year. And I'm looking forward to receiving your questions.